Hello friends and welcome back to another video about Yellow Box. Today we're talking about the audio panel. We're going to go over all of the inputs, different ways to get signals here, and how to manipulate the signals once you get them. Hey friends, my name is Rob and I'm a wedding photographer and videographer here in Virginia Beach in Hampton Roads, Virginia. I've been mixing sound and working on all kinds of productions from commercial to private for the past 15 years. About four years ago I started using Yellow Box and I'm an original adopter and I'm creating these videos to help you learn more about Yellow Box as a new customer. So welcome to video 253, Yellow Box course on the audio panel. Okay, so what is the audio mixer? Well, it's where all of your sources come together. Whatever you have plugged into Yellow Box will be seen on the audio mixer panel. And the panel will dynamically enlarge or shrink, means have more or fewer inputs, based on how many inputs you plug into it. Yellow Box has a mic level and a line level input. The mic level and line level inputs work within the industry standards of around minus 10 decibels on the mic side and plus 4 decibels on the line level side. Those two differentiations, microphone level and line level, have to do with exactly the strength and the loudness of your microphone, the signal that it puts out. We talked about that in 251, Mastering the Meter. In this instance, we have a program. The program is always on. If I were to pr turn program off, you'll see the meters stop here. Now, you can still hear me because I'm actually recording this video through my mixer onto tape, so to speak, on my camcorder. If you were live and you pressed off for program, all program audio would turn off your viewers would hear nothing. If you think about the term program, it comes from the 50s, the 60s, the programming for the daily television show lineup. So when we think about program, that is your television show, your broadcast. Down here underneath it and all of these bars that you see of different lengths, that is your gain attenuation. You can either boost a signal or reduce the signal's gain using those lines. We talked about that also in Master the Meter. Now, as you look right here, all of my settings are set slightly differently based on the input that I'm using, and we'll talk about them in just a moment. I want you to see right now that I've got HDMI 1 on and mic off. I'm going to switch between the two just so that you can hear the difference right now. And now I've switched over to audio from HDMI 1. We get a couple of things. Number one, HDMI 1 is actually coming in just a little bit hotter in this instance. So I can bring my audio down on my board, or I can actually bring my audio down on my mic level right there. And as I'm looking at it, I can see that it's going down. The next thing is, I much prefer HDMI 1 audio. Now, I prefer HDMI 1 audio simply because, as we are discussing this, as we are talking about this, I'm able to control all those additional sources like we talked about. When we look at the audio panel as a whole, we see there's quite a bit of functionality built right into it. The next thing that we have is AFV, Audio Follows Video. I don't suggest using Audio Follows Video because it would require that every video source have its own microphone and that the microphone is set up properly to attenuate the gain so that you can hear a good mix. This can be done, but it's kind of complicated. If you're running sound through a soundboard and you have an onboard microphone like you're built into all of your cameras or camcorders, if you have audio follows video turned on, every time you switch from one camera to another, it will not use the audio that you meticulously set from your soundboard or through the microphone that's going directly into your camera. Instead, it will use the on-camera audio, which you likely didn't set. This means that your levels, the sound, and the noise that's in your signal will change from each angle to each angle. It will be terrible, it'll sound terrible, and it's no good. You would use Audio Follows Video if you were doing an on-location production, did not have a soundboard, and you had multiple cameras that had different inputs that you were running wirelessly into 
yellow box, then I would feel comfortable switching between each camera because all of the audio was set to the same levels and it sounded good on each camera. Then audio follows video is fine. However, in a studio or production setting specific to a church or even a band or a conference hall, a hotel meeting room, a, uh, a client event, a cocktail party, a, a DJ, a live stream, any of those things like that, especially if you were doing sports, like where you had multiple cameras and you had commentators, you would not want audio to follow video. So I caution you about using audio follows video. The next thing that we have up here is we have this little button that looks like a squiggly line and a microphone. This is our line in and mic in noise reduction and gain function. On those two inputs, which are up here on Yolo Box because I'm using it upside down and have the screen flipped, which is a feature that you can do in the settings from the front panel, from the front menu. Um, my mic level and my line level inputs have additional noise reduction and gain boost functions. These gain boost functions are in addition to the gain that you might set on the mic or line input. By default, your mic and line level inputs have noise reduction turned on. Now, this feature is baked in. It is either on or off. You can't choose what level or what strength of noise reduction that you have and you can only apply noise reduction to the mic or the line. Notice we have several other audio inputs because we have an HDMI input and we have local video inputs. Those are not represented in this panel. In this instance, the mic and the line can attenuate noise and try to get rid of background irritating noises that happen that would ruin your stream otherwise. This is good for noisy situations like in a conference hall, think of uh, things like that, where you may want to talk to the camera using an on-camera or handheld mic, and the background noise sounds overwhelming. Once you set your gain properly and know what types of microphones to use, you won't have a problem with noise. Here's a pro tip for you right now. Dynamic microphones, microphones that are not powered, like this one, are excellent at rejecting noise. This is because it takes more excitement from your, it takes more sound pressure level, more volume to excite the capsule. In that instance, it rejects the background noise and you have less need for noise reduction. And there you have it. Let's move to monitor. Monitor is where you're going to listen to your sound. It's how you monitor the sound. Sometimes when people plug in headphones, they say that they hear a hiss in their headphones. Recognizing that headphones have different build qualities for the different types of application they're gonna be used in from a cheap pair you might get to an expensive pair for reference, those headphones have different impedances. So much of the hiss that you hear about in headphones come from the fact that you're using a consumer or worse grade of headphone that's not built for the prosumer specification that Yellowbox has. If you have a very low impedance headphone, you're going to hear a lot of hiss. And if you have a high impedance headphone, you won't. High impedance headphones are for reference. They're expensive. Here is where you can help attenuate that sound by blasting it, boosting it up, or lowering it down. Moving on to local two. Whenever we see local video, we're gonna recognize that these are the videos we choose based on the internal recordings that we have stored on the camera. Now, local video could be a recording that you did, like an instant replay, or local video could be a production that you did separately and you loaded onto Yellow Box with the SD card because you wanted to play it at a certain time. In these instances, we will hear local videos like this. We're going to turn on local video one. And as I turn it on, check it out. Sorry about that. I recognized that it was a little bit loud when it was going through just by looking at the monitors. Now, you'll see I can turn that off and the video continues to play. If I turn on Audio Follows Video, come back to me, and I turn on Local Video number one, what will happen is 
as I go to local video one, you will not hear my voice. We talked a lot about audio follows video earlier. Let me share with you how that works. I'm going to begin counting, I'm going to switch, and I'm going to come back. I'm actually gonna lower local video one a little bit more for you. So, one, two, three, four, five, and 11, 12. As you noticed, it continued, but you didn't hear me, you heard the audio from the source. Okay, so the next thing I have to talk about is the audio delay. Yellow Box gives us a great audio delay function. We basically get almost half of a second of audio delay. We can dial in up to 420 milliseconds. A second is divided 1,000 times to come up with one millisecond. That's one one thousandth of a second. This is important because knowing what a millisecond is, the base of operation that we're going to do, is going to allow us to determine how many frames, how many milliseconds of offset we might need. For example, if we're filming and producing in 24 frames a second, we divide 1,000 by 24, and we get something close to 44 milliseconds, which means one frame of video is about 44 millionths of a second, 44 milliseconds. Now, if we wanted to go a little bit further with this, we would be able to adjust an out of sync audio or video by using the slider. We can do this one of two ways. The, the easiest way that you'll most likely do on location is actually simply to watch and adjust on the fly. This tool right here, the delay function, can be adjusted as you're switching cameras and as you're live, cast, live broadcasting the signal, which is no problem. It's not usually as effective as the next way we're gonna do it, the next method I'll show you, but it will work in a pinch. And the easiest way to do is actually just look at your video, monitor your source, and when you see that the audio and the video is not lining up, begin to adjust. The second method is very simple. We take that number, our frame rate, divide it by 1,000 so we know exactly how many milliseconds one frame is. In this instance, we're about 44 milliseconds uh, per frame on a, a timeline of uh, 24 frames per second. And then what do we do? Well, we record a clap. Now that clap sound happens when your hand comes together. So you know when your hand comes together, the moment that your hand comes together, that's when that spike sound has been made. This clap test will allow us to take that recorded video into our video processing software, such as Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, and look at it on the timeline. When we look at it on the timeline, we can actually scrub the video, which means progress frame by frame, until the hand comes together for the first time. When we do, we will likely see that the audio spike in the sound channel precedes that frame by a number of frames. This is what we would count. We would count from the spike to the point where the hands came together, and we would determine that is the frame delay between our audio and video. If it was five frame delay, we would then take that five frames and multiply it by 45 milliseconds. Well, five times 50 milliseconds is 250 milliseconds. Take away 25 because 45 milliseconds, five times 45 takes us to 225 milliseconds. Now we can dial in 225 milliseconds for the five frame delay. I think that's what it says right there. I can't see it from this angle very well. And that's how we would dial it in specifically per the camera. And those are the tips I have for you today on our beautiful class 253 the audio signal panel. My name is Rob. I hope that you have found this helpful. If you have, don't forget to use the links down below. That's the way you can thank me. Their affiliate links pick up any gear that you'd like. If you have any questions that you have down below, I'd like to help you. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Bye for now.